Hello, welcome to Candy Shop Yarns Makers Vlog. I am Deborah. I am the owner of Candy Shop Yarns, which is a hand dyed yarn company. Um, it's episode 11, April 27th, 2023. And I am very happy to be back with you. I actually recorded an episode last week, but it was a complete and utter disaster. <laughs> and I was trying to edit it and I just thought, oh, forget it. <laughs> we'll just try again next week. <laughs> so I'm here, I'm back. <sighs> I feel like I need to take a deep breath. I need to sit down, like try and relax. There has been just so much going on in life. Um, I'll just give you a little life update before we get started into all of the projects. First of all, my daughter Ella, she was married and we had the wedding. That was Easter weekend. The weather, we had over 12 inches of snow in my driveway oh, two, three days before the wedding. <laughs> now it was not meant to be an outdoor wedding, so that's all right. We had made sure that we had an option for indoor or outdoor, depending on the, we the weather. So we decided to move everything indoors. Um, but the weather actually, the snow melted literally just in time. That morning it was still melting, but by the time um, guests were arriving, all the snow was melted. But it also meant we didn't really have leaves on the trees, flowers in bloom. Um, so photos are a little bit more, not as colorful as I would have liked because we took photos outside since the lighting is better than inside. Um, and I just have a few images that I'll share here, but everything turned out beautiful. Like there were really just no, no problems. I, I kind of have the view anyways, that the object, the goal, the end goal of this event is to be married. So if you end at the end married, you've set out what you, um, you've accomplished what you set out to do. So everything else is bonus. <laughs> so the flowers are bonus, the cake is bonus, the decorations are bonus, the invitations are bonus, like everything else is just a bonus. So looking at it that way just kind of helps to keep things in perspective. And the day before I was just kind of tied up in knots, just so much stress and anxiety about things. And God kind of just whispered to my mind that, listen, these are all your favorite people coming. <laughs> all the people invited are all of your favorite people. So why are you stressed? Because you love them all, you're excited to see them, and they're excited to be here. You, If you were to spend time with them doing anything else, you wouldn't be stressed about it. So I just kind of thought, yeah, I'll just let go of all of that stress and anxiety and let it be. So it was good. Um, and then we had Easter the next day and my family was so wonderful and planned like my extended family Emily if you watch Salt City Knits podcast if you have found us found me and my sister Emily from Meanwhile at the Castle thank you for coming thank you for following us over here we had a podcast for years um, through Meanwhile at the Castle together but the scheduling was so challenging to work out that it, yeah, our episodes were few and far between. And um, so it was really hard to make the decision to start my own. And then Emily later started her own um, because it was kind of a weird feeling just starting from scratch again. Like we had already done that. <laughs> so we're doing it again. Um, so thank you if you followed us here, but there's only a very small percentage that have found us. But I think many of you have found me through other avenues. So thank you for joining me. Um, so Easter, Emily, my siblings, my parents, they planned a meal and it was lovely to just go and not have to worry about anything the next day. The day after that was when I had 
um, my new jaw appliance fitted and I didn't know what to expect of it because they told me it was going to be rough for a while and you know what it was rough for a while but I'm doing much better and um, thankfully they told me that for special occasions once or twice a week it can come out like recording this episode which is why I'm here because I would not have otherwise in the future when I'm more comfortable with speaking with it in then I I may end up having it in and you'll see that then and you'll hear my lisping and my teas and other things sounding more mushy but that's okay it's okay I'm fine with it um, it's just not it's not easy to speak with it in right now so hopefully that will get easier um, but my jaw is tired today I woke up just thinking oh it's really sore today and it hasn't been so much oh Luna um, the f it was last Saturday, so I've had it for two to three weeks now. I don't even know how long, but, but, um, three, four days ago, my husband and I went out to eat and that was the first time I was like, I, I wasn't super worried about eating in public because I have only been eating at home because you eat with the jaw appliance in and, um, we went to P.F. Chang's, but we were there like right when they opened and there was almost nobody there. So I wasn't as nervous because I have to use my finger to clear things out and that's that's uncomfortable to do around people. So we were there and I found that lettuce wraps, their appetizer, their chicken lettuce wraps were so easy to eat. I almost cried. I was like, it tastes so good and it was easy to eat. And then I also got another chicken dish that they have that's gluten free and I found that chicken is the easiest for me to eat. That's normally one that's hard for me to eat with other things going on but that was the easiest and I was full at the end and I hadn't been full for a week and a half or so and I've lost a good amount of weight. <laughs> so I I just was so happy and now all I want are P.F. Chang's chicken lettuce wraps. It's not easy for me to get to a P.F. Chang's, so it's not likely to happen often. <laughs> but if any of you are ever around a P.F. Chang's and then you're coming to my house, bring it. <laughs> oh, Nadia just walked in. Hey, sweetie. I'm recording here. Okay, sorry. Did you want to come say hi? You can come wave hi to everybody. Just your hand. <laughs> well, I was going to let everybody know that it was Nadia's 16th birthday this last week. So that was fun. You don't want to say hi? That's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> um, so on her 16th birthday, we had a class that we went to, a psychology class that she and I are attending together. And after that, what she really wanted was to go to a salon and kind of have a salon experience because I'm the one that always does her hair. I went to cosmetology school. Having your mom do your hair, like that's convenient, but that's not as fun. So she really wanted to go to a salon and have that experience. So we took her to have her hair dyed. She had kind of balayage done and then I ended up trimming her hair because she has so much hair and it's really long. It took all of the appointment time. There wasn't time to cut her hair. So that was no problem. I could do that because she was going after that with one of her best friends on a group date and they went bowling. So that was just a fun birthday I hope for her. And then the next day um, she wanted to go with her best friend to Lagoon, which is our local amusement park. And um, it was, I mean, it's been open for a few weekends, but the weather's been so bad that like, it would be miserable to go. And when she went, it was still pretty cold. She had her coat, she had gloves, she had a hat on, but she was so happy to be there. We got season passes for that. So I'll be going, um, I don't know when. <laughs> I'll be going with her as often as I can. I like to go there and sit in the shade and knit and listen to the birds there, listen to all the people screaming, having fun on the rides. I like to go on the rides as well, but I enjoy just being in the atmosphere of everybody, just like the, like the high energy enthusiasm. I just love that. 
I love that. I loved to go there when I was young. So just happy memories. Um, and this weekend is the Great Basin Fiber Arts Festival. And it is normally Mother's Day weekend, but they've moved it a couple of weeks earlier because of scheduling conflicts, which meant that I wasn't going to be able to be a vendor because my daughter was getting married just barely, and I knew I wouldn't be able to do that as well. I thought with my daughter getting married, dealing with the job clients, trying to prepare for a yarn festival would not be a wise choice. I'm glad, but I'm also really sad. I love being a vendor. That was actually one of my big motivating factors for starting Candy Shop Yarns, was I wanted to be a vendor. So I'm, I'm sad about it, but like I said, also kind of relieved about the amount of prep that it takes. So I am going to be going this Saturday um, and then at noon having a meetup with friends just somewhere on the lawn there to sit and knit and most people will be eating. I probably won't. I still prefer to eat at home. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing that this weekend, but my daughter got invited last minute to a prom this Saturday and it's when I'm going to be gone. Like I scheduled this meetup and I'm just so sad to miss that, like miss her. She's not getting ready for prom and being all in her dress and everything and going because they're going to go do fun things together and then she's going to get ready with their group. Like the, the girls all have kind of time for themselves to get ready and so I wouldn't see that part of it but I'm just kind of bummed. This is her first prom. She goes to a dance almost every single weekend but it's a really casual affair kind of thing with our church or with um friends but this one being prom you know that's a big deal <laughs> okay let's get started with all of the things i've been working on first of all i wanted to show you what i'm wearing i made this um i have all this fabric to make baby things um, my daughter is expecting in June, so is my niece, on the exact same day, and they're both having boys. <laughs> like, what are the odds? Well, actually, I figured out the odds, but it's okay. That's all right. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. So I have all this baby fabric, and I didn't have anywhere to put it, and I thought, well, you know what? It means I need to make things with the fabric I already have in stash that I wanted to make. So I pulled out one of the things that I knew I could make quickly because I haven't had much time at all, but sewing for me is just as therapeutic as knitting, but I don't get to it as often because it's something that I need to go into a specific room, be away from everybody. Knitting is portable and this is not as portable. So I'll show you the pattern and then I'll show you the whole look. So this is the pattern I used, new look. And I made view B, but I shortened it by five inches on the bottom, not the sleeves, but the bottom, because I didn't have enough fabric to make the full length. And I'm really glad that I shortened it because it's actually plenty long. So I am five foot four inches, so I'm not really tall. But I mean, I'm pretty average. What size did I make? I made a size smaller than my measurements called for because I just know that these commercial patterns often tend to be big on me. And because this is a really loose fitting kind of garment, as long as my shoulder seams were where I wanted them to be, then that was fine. So I did, these did end up right where I wanted the shoulder seam to be. They're right on the edge of my shoulder, so that's good. But I can't remember what size. Let's see. I made the size small. There's extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. I was right on the verge. I was on the upper end of the small, the lower end of the medium. And so I, I did the small. So this is what I made. Oh, okay. 
Let's move this. Oh, it's too dark. Can't see. Come on. Let's see. How far does it go down? It goes down quite a ways. This is my Miss Fisher look because I want to be Miss Fisher. If you're familiar with Miss Fisher, the lighting is really terrible here. But she wears these white, wide leg flowy pants and these long flowy duster jackets all the time. So I have my pink palazzo pants, which you can't really see because the lighting is weird. It's because I'm backlit here. I mean, I have lighting here, here all the way around, but whoa, yeah, see, the lighting goes in and out. It's hard to see. Um, I've got my, I call them party pants. They're bright pink chiffon pleated flowy palazzo pants. They're so fabulous. They're so fabulous that whenever I put them on, it's a party. So I'll take this off. I have a white shirt, a white blouse that I want to make to go with this, but I didn't have time to make that. So I'm just wearing a plain white t-shirt. So the fabric has peacocks, which is fantastic because in the 1920s, they were so enthralled with peacocks. Mm -hmm. And it's very bright and colorful, which is something I really love in the summertime. I just like the brighter, the better. So it's quite long. It has a rounded hem that um, is longer in the back than the front, but not dramatic. And whew, let's see, you can see the party pants. <laughs> the sleeves have these beautiful kind of bell sleeves from the elbow down and they're just kind of bracelet length which is perfect because then I can still do things and not have them get in the way. What I wish that I had done was alter the neckline to either um, bl blend, blend, come from the edge of my neck here down to here so we don't, it's not this square point or that I had done a full interfacing like a, a bigger interfacing here so that this could fold down here and you'd see the print on both sides and wear it like this. I'll still end up wearing it like this even though the facing is not completely covering it because it's not going to want to just stay like this and I don't want to put a closure here to have it be like choking me and look too rigid because this is supposed to be flowy and this is like a rayon I don't remember I bought this I bought this in 2020 during my I want to wear all of the flowy Miss Fisher things phase um, and I I made a couple of things and then realized that I underestimated the amount of time that I would have because <laughs> I was spending it while doing other things. So um, I don't remember what the fabric is. I did buy it at Joanne Fabric, but anyways, I love it. Love it. Um, I don't remember how many yards I had, but like I said, I shortened it five inches and I'm really glad I did. That's all of my sewing. So I'm going to go on to other makes. I have finished several things. So let's start with the big one. I love pink. I love pink. And I, I'm not picky about pink. I like all the pinks. All pinks. I'm trying to think of a pink I don't like. I can't think of one. They're all good. So I finished my Arconia sweater. This is a pattern by Amy Loudon of Taylor S Studios. I've showed this one several times now. This pattern is out currently. Now I have the test knit version that I've printed up here. I need to get the final version from her. Um, so this isn't the photo that would be on the pattern. Um, and I just had been talking to her as she had been designing it, and I was just telling her, I have, I have to make that. So, <laughs> so I was able to cast it on. I did not test knit it. I just 
knit it during the test knit period because I could. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so some things. My gauge wa was off. It was a little too loose, but I wasn't worried about it because I liked the oversized fit. You know, it was a drop shoulder. I liked the oversized nature of it, but in the end, it wasn't really that different. Like it wasn't dramatically different in the sizing. So I have some photos that I'll insert here for you to see. I like how it fits. I think that it's super flattering. It's nice and warm. I did adjust some things on it. So I lengthened it because this one was meant to hit right at the waist and I wanted it to be longer. And so I added I think three inches. I added three inches to the bottom before I began the ribbing. Um, everything else I did the same. I was gonna say I made several adjustments. I didn't, I only did that adjustment. I just added length to that. I thought that I was doing the sleeves shorter, but I didn't in the end. And I like it because I can still fold the cuff back. Um, and it's loose enough that I can fold it back and not have it feel restricted. So I can do that. I know you want to go in and out and in and out. You're going to have to just stay. Come here. This was the problem last week was my dog requires more attention when I am recording a podcast than any of my children as toddlers would have. <laughs> so I don't know if that's entirely true. You know how you forget things. <laughs> I mean, there's some things I won't forget, but some things dull over time. Um, I did make a mistake, but I don't think that it's a problem. In the neck right here, the increases, are they increases? Let's see if I can see that on the pattern very well, on the pattern photo. I don't think you can see it really well, but you can kind of see the increases. They're not right up against the cast on edge or the, yeah, they're, they're out a little ways so that you can see that detail. I read it incorrectly and I did it like right on the edge. And I was worried it was gonna cause a problem for picking up the stitches later for doing the neckline, but not at all. I didn't have any problem. So it actually just disappeared completely, which is fine, but I did like that detail where you could see the increases here. I love this ribbed folded over neck. Um, I, I really like all of it. I just like it all. And I even got to wear it twice, twice because it has still been quite cool, but it's warming up yesterday and today. So we may have seen the end of winter here in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's possible, it's possible. I even took pictures of daffodils in my yard that were starting to bloom. Last fall, I planted hundreds. And they don't look like much because the first year there's just one bloom per stem or per bulb. And in the future, as they kind of naturalize and they fill in, then you have less of a sparse look, except for tulips. Not all tulips, but a lot of tulips don't naturalize as well. But I took some pictures of the daffodils. They were so late in blooming, but we're just starting to see them now and it's fun. So I'm glad I got to wear my sweater and I love the yarn. I didn't alternate skeins and it looks just fine. I'm really glad because I just couldn't bear the thought of alternating skeins on this project. So what I used, if you have not seen this before, because you're new to my podcast, these are the two yarns that I held together. I used my truffle base, which is a fingering weight um, boucle slub base. So it's just got a lot of texture. That's what I wanted for this um, sweater because it's such a simple pattern the adding in texture was really easy and then I held it with a strand of my cotton candy mohair in the colorway cherry oh and the colorway of this one was sugar lips which is a tonal 
pink and red and violet colorway. So I have, let me get it, this much yarn left. So let's see, I had three skeins of each to begin with. And what do I have remaining of the boucle slub? I have 68 grams left. So it used two and some of a third. And then my mohair, those are 50 gram skeins. I have 39 grams left. So that took two and some. <laughs> but I love it. So this will now get packed away until the fall. I have not been much for garment knitting. I feel like in general, that's not my go-to. What I really want to make typically are accessories, socks and other accessories. But lately, all I can think about <laughs> are sweaters. What's the next one I'm gonna knit? What yarn do I wanna use? What colorway from my shop am I excited to use? And so I don't have enough time to knit all the sweaters just like everybody here we all wish we had more time for making but uh, I kind of want to do a challenge to see like if I only knit on a sweater only how long would it take me to make one start to finish and that would depend on if it's fingering weight if it's DK weight or worsted if it is um, patterned or stockinette, if it's a cardigan versus in the round, how long the sweater, you know, there's so many variables, but it usually takes me months to knit a sweater. Sometimes I've had two that have taken me a year each. Um, so I'm not fast when it comes to those, but I'm usually doing a lot of other things. So I kind of want to see if I could do one in one month. I don't know. Okay, more finished projects. My local knitting group, um, years ago, um, I kind of put a call out on Instagram to see if anybody wanted to join a local knitting group that I was going to start. Okay, so I put a call out onto Instagram to see if there were any people who lived locally here that wanted to come to the knitting group. Um, I just kind of wanted, like I had community online, but I wanted one in person. And that was really fun because over the years it has evolved, members that have come and gone, and um, we've met at various places, done different things, but we've kind of, I feel like, settled in and found our, found our stride now. I mean, it's been years, six maybe, six years or so and there's a lot of things that we like to do we are a group that does things like we have parties and we host exchanges and all sorts of fun things and um, there is a a local charity group maybe we could call it I think it's called knit for peace SLC and they are um, looking for, I'm gonna look this up, knit for peace. Okay, yes, here it is. Let's turn down the brightness. Knit for peace. So, they um, are looking for children's knit hats in superwash um, yarns or in acrylic. And it's for children, but they pretty much want adult size. They said, did you know a child's head is full grown by the time they go to kindergarten? It says, yes, my hairstylist confirmed that this is correct. So we are asking for adult smalls and medium hats. <laughs> so, um, I have a lot of superwash yarn, but just knowing that that can be stressful for people. Like hats don't always get washed a whole lot, but I wanted to make sure that there were zero 
problems washing this hat, the hats that I made. So our group is Knitting Hats for this organization and some of the members have done quite a few. There are two that ended up getting circular knitting machines for doing hats. One got um, one of them from Michaels and another got an Addy. Nobody got a Centro. Um, but I'm just hand knitting mine. So I went to Joanne Fabric and Crafts and I got two different yarns. Actually, I got quite a few, but this is the one I'm going to show you today because, I mean, the name of it, ice cream yarn. Yes, please. So this is an acrylic yarn and it is a DK weight, it looks to me, and the measurements and everything in such fun colorways. This is what I have left. So I looked all over for patterns and I wanted it to be something that wasn't just plain stock and net, really basic. I wanted it to have some sort of pattern. And then I was like, oh, I already designed one. The ice cream swirl hat. So this is one of mine and, oh, just a moment. Okay, um, what was I saying? Oh, so I decided to knit that hat, but I did make an adjustment. So I did the small size, the small adult, um, and I added a fold over brim. So I knit it just twice as long as my pattern calls for so that I could fold it up because I wanted to make sure that it would be warm enough over the, over the ears. I also shortened the length by an inch so that it wouldn't be slouchy at all because for a child, I, I wanted it to fit more like a beanie. I also didn't add a pom-pom because pom-poms can be finicky for washing. So I wanted this to be really easy to care for. But I, oh my goodness, look at those colors. Oh, this is so fun. And it looks really small, but I mean, it is really stretchy, really, because it's all ribbing and just knits and pearls, so really stretchy, but oh, I love the colors on this. And when I was there, I was like, they had so many cute colorways in this ice cream yarn. I mean, it was, it was so hard to narrow this down. So I knit one, and it took just under 50 grams to make this. So I have enough to make another one, just the same. But I did get one other. Um, and this is in my cute bag that I made using the fabric that my friend sent me. I was contemplating adding this trim to my jacket but it's a little too pastel-y. I needed it to be more vibrant. So I still want to see if I can find a trim, not for the sleeves but for the bottom hem. I would like something fun. Let me show you the other colorway. It's kind of squishy because I've been knitting from it. Look at that one. This one feels more rough and even I would say dusty or grimy when I'm knitting with it. I feel like something is coming off of the yarn. It, it's not pleasant to knit with. This one was fine. This one, I'm not enjoying knitting with it. Like after it's knit, it feels fine, but the process of knitting with it, I don't know. I'm not, not enjoying that. But I thought with this one, I would do all ribbing. So this is a two by two ribbed, um, I said cuff, brim, brim. That's what I was trying to remember. Um, this one I just did the same, did I do the same size? 
Yes, I did the same size, but for this pattern, you use one size needles for the brim and you go up two sizes for the hat. I chose the size in between to knit the whole thing in ribbing. Look how cute this one is. Okay, now look at that. It stretches like crazy. So this is the small, um, because they're asking for small or mediums, but I figured since it stretches a lot, it would be a good, good one for anybody. And I decided I would once again have it, have a fold up brim so that it would be warm around the ears. No, I can't let you in and out endlessly because that's what it would be. Go get a toy. You want to bring me a toy? No? Um, and I just thought, I'll knit until it looks about right. Well, I was looking at it this morning thinking, oh, it's going to need more. And then I forgot, oh, I'm going to do decreases on this hat. You don't decrease. On this one, I am going to decrease on the crown. So I think I better just start the decreases now. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I'll probably do it in four points. So it'll be like a T, like an X. That's probably what I'll do for this one. Haven't decided yet. But once again, I should have enough to make another one. Though, like I said, I'm not enjoying knitting with this one. It's actually hurting my hands. It doesn't give the same way that natural fibers give. Because normally this gauge is so easy to work with, but I'm not not enjoying it other than the colorway is delightful to work with. I have more yarns, um, one more yarn, but not in this same color, not in the same yarn. It's a different yarn completely that I bought at Hobby um, Craft. And we'll see if I get to that one. So knitting four or five would be fantastic if I managed that. Two is also fabulous, so I'm, I'm good with that as well. I gotta figure out where to put everything. Okay, along those lines, I don't know why I said along those lines. Well, I know why, but it doesn't sound like it at first. I knit baby leggings. Oh, they're so cute so adorable okay the pattern is uh let me grab it it is Mim mimi ribbed leggings by mimi knitting i bought this pattern on etsy i just did a search for baby knits and looked through and they had a lot of patterns that looked adorable i'd never used this designer before and I didn't read reviews. Um, the pattern is, is not quite as easy for me to follow as I would like. It kind of just, I don't know, it just doesn't flow as well for my brain. But I have had some issues with some of the numbers. So things have not been super clear all the way through and I've discovered some of that is my fault for reading it wrong and other things is the pattern. So on the very front of the pattern it shows different sizes available. Well there's one size that I was looking for. Um, it's not there's no instructions anywhere in the pattern for it but I looked at it and saw it was the second size that's one to three months and that's what I wanted. So I went into the pattern and just saw second size and circled the second size all the way through. Well, the numbers didn't work with that. So after going back, after having finished this one, <laughs> I discovered that and saw my error there. But there are a couple of other places where there are some errors, but it's easy enough now that I figured out what was wrong. <laughs> that there isn't that size. It shows it on the front page of sizes available, but it's not available anywhere else in the pattern. Once I figured that out, a lot of other things made more sense. <laughs> um, so what I ended up making was the 68 
size, which is three to six months. I think this looks more like a six to 12 month size. Um, but it, especially because it's ribbed and so it's a super stretchy one. Um, one thing that it says is, so you do a fold over waistband and you do that with a provisional cast on and I don't do provisional cast ons unless it's something that's really necessary in a pattern. So like if you're doing a double brim on a hat or a double cuff on a sock or like this, I don't. I just cast on and then I pick up one stitch as I go and join it with the other and I, it's easy. So this is what it looks like doing it that way. Um, so that's one thing that I did different. But it tells you before you close it up to add an elastic or an I-cord um, drawstring. So if you did an I-cord drawstring, there's instructions for putting two little holes, eyelets, in the front center. Um, okay, well that's great to put an elastic, but what size? Elastic. No clue. No idea. So I went online and did a search and looked and looked and looked and I can find sizes for everything but a waist, like an average size for what I was looking for was a three to six month, but this is more, like I said, I think six to 12 month size. Okay, Luna, I'll let you out. Come on, come on girl. Go ahead. So I gave it my best guess. <laughs> I laid it flat and I did elastic that was just tiny, tiny bit tighter, knowing that, uh, you know, if it were to stretch, I mean like just this size, it will hold it snugly on, but if it needs to stretch out, it can still stretch out. It's not something that I could, if it didn't fit later, go back and unpick and change the elastic. So it is what it is. <laughs> So I hope that that works, but it's adorable, adorable. So this is going to be for my niece's baby. So my sister, Emily, that we recorded a podcast together, Meanwhile at the Castle, her oldest daughter is having a baby boy, I mentioned earlier. So this is for her baby. So I made that one and then I started another one for my daughter's baby. And the yarn that I'm using is the same because I really liked I really liked it. I just thought it was so cute. It is from um, Hobby Crafts Hobby Craft Store. Is that what it's called? Hobby, yeah. Um, and it's Yarn Bee, which is their brand. Soft and sleek DK. And the colorway is linen. Or 04 and I thought this would be a good one because with a baby especially on the bottom you're gonna want to put that in a washer all the time in a washing machine so I did not want to run the risk of anything um, felting so um, I, I finished, but I had this much yarn left, but not enough. This is like 40 grams out of 100, so not enough to make another one. So I went and got another ball, but they're not the same dye lot. Otherwise, I would have started with this one and just picked up and carried on with this one afterwards, but they're a different dye lot. So like you can see that they're slightly different. Close enough that if I were to alternate skeins, it would be just fine. Um, and I went down one size, so I am knitting. Am I going down one size? Now I don't even know. Oh, maybe I'm knitting the same size. Uh-oh, now I think I am. Yeah, I'm knitting the same size. I meant to go down one. Well, <laughs> so much for that. No, look at this, it's different. It's different. So I guess I didn't knit the 68 on the first one. Okay, see this is what I was saying. It's confusing. 
I did the third size. Okay, so the first one I did was the 74 and it says six to nine months. That makes more sense. Six to nine month size, that's what this one is. This is the three to six month size. Okay. Um, and I decided to do the drawstring in this one. I didn't do it in the first one because my concern is with a baby, every time you go to change a diaper, you have to untie and retie this. That's annoying because when you have a baby and you're changing their diaper, the last thing you want to do is have more fuss. The other thing is with a baby, as they're wiggling around and doing stuff, they could pull this, untie it, and pull it all the way out. And now you don't have a drawstring in there and that would be really hard to feed through, but also that could get wrapped around their neck or arms or something. And that's not safe. So I didn't want to do a drawstring there, but with the elastic situation, I decided to do a drawstring. But what I did is I knit, I knit half of the length of the drawstring. And then when I got around to the back, like halfway through, I tacked it like I, I knit the drawstring in to the inside back layer here as I went and did that for a couple of stitches and then finished knitting the rest of the I cord so that it couldn't be pulled out. Well, it's really long. It's way too long. This, I feel like, is excessive because, you know, this can only stretch so much, but that's not going to use up all the length. So I've never done this before, but I'm going to, on I cord, but I'm going to try when I'm done with this cutting or unpicking, whatever, one end, I like I I tucked the tail and wove it through the I cord, the stitches quite a ways so that the tail is just tucked in here. So I could try and find that end and pull it out on the one side where I ended and like just unravel part way and then end it sooner. But what about the other side? I think I'm actually just gonna cut it kind of unpick until I have enough length to close it up and feed the cord through again, the tail end through, so I can make it shorter. So anyways, it has kind of this gusset here. You you knit two, two through the gusset, then you put stitches on hold, you knit one leg, and then you pick up the stitches for the other one, knit the other leg, and then you pick up stitches on two needles and do a, um, you graft those two stitches together, those two needles together in the center there. That's what I did here. Um, and that's pretty simple. So now that I've made this pattern and I could figure it out, it's fine. I'd, I'd make it again, but I am so burned out on ribbing. This is all ribbing. And this is all ribbing, three by one ribbing. And this was all ribbing and then knits and pearls. The other hat was all ribbing. And my next project is all on ribbing. I am just like, I'm done, done with knits and pearls. <laughs> I'll show you the next one. This is one that I've showed before. I have so many things piled up here. Let's see if I can put some things away, make room, try and finish before Luna decides she needs to come back in. Okay, okay, I think I've got it. This is my Lucky Star Socks. This is a pattern that I have available in my shop. And I showed these last time and probably the time before because I was, I had asked a question for one of the giveaways of what is your favorite project that you have made to date? And I was thinking about my answer, what would mine be? And it's scrappy socks, but not just scrappy socks. I like these. I mean, you could call them scrappy, but but I didn't use scraps. I used my minis for it. Okay, I last time hadn't got to the toe. I added in the green. I was debating on if I was going to use that green or not. 
because I didn't like any of the green options that I had. So I ended up dyeing some yarn two colorways for it. And once I put it in, I'm like, hmm, I don't think I like the green. <laughs> so I haven't got to that point on my second sock yet. I'm knitting these concurrently. Um, one on, I'm knitting them on separate needles um, and just doing one part and then doing the second part, or, you know, the same part on the other sock, and then I'll do these stripes and then these stripes and then this stripe and this and this and this until I got to the heel because I wanted to do the duplicate stitch at the same time. After that, I just knit down till I did the um, striping on the foot. And so now I need to do the stripe, you know, finish this foot down to the striping. And this is three by one ribbing. <laughs> So I have just done so much three by one ribbing, which is why this isn't done because I just like, I don't, I don't want to work on any more three by one ribbing or two by two ribbing for that matter, or one by one. So, um, I'll get to this one, but now I can't de decide if I want to just pull out that green and just do all of the foot yellow. I don't have to decide until I get this down to that point and then, then I'll decide. What would you do? This is why I don't like it. Because up to this point, it's bright and fun and colorful, but it doesn't look to me like a box of crayons. Now it looks like a box of crayons, you know, like the eight or 10 colors. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, I don't know. I don't know what it is that I don't, I can't really say exactly why I don't like that. Because I think that looks fun, that looks childish. Like what, why is it that green makes it look childish to me? I don't know. Now Luna's ready to come in, I thought so. Okay, come on in girly. Okay. Yeah, what would you do? What colors would you pick? You probably wouldn't pick the super bright. I don't know, some people really like bright, but some people really hate it. I don't like scummy colors. I'm not a big fan of earthy colors in general. Like I can look at them and I can appreciate them, but I don't want to wear them. They make me look tired. Bright colors make me feel vibrant. So the vib more vibrant the color, the more vibrant I feel. So sometimes I'll wear pastels when I'm in a more subdued mood, but not earthy colors. Those make me feel tired for some reason. But that's the thing. There's different colors for every different personality. So I don't know. Some people get offended by certain colors like, oh, that hurts my eyes. But I'm not offended. I just like color. Like I can see all the other colors and think they're beautiful, but it doesn't mean necessarily that I'll wear it or that I'm going to design anything with it or, you know, decorate my house with it or something. But even the way I decorate my house is very different too than the colors that I wear. Trying to balance that with my husband's aesthetic, which would be um, exactly what I said I don't like. <laughs> Like he likes really deep, rich, warm tones, like lots of dark woods. And yeah, I, I would feel like I was trapped in a cave if my house was like that. <laughs> but seeing it, like I can see why it looks beautiful. But I am like, the brighter the better. You can see lots of light. Like The more light, the better for me. So I, last year in the summer though, was the first time I ever experienced um, summer seasonal depression from too much light. Normally I need, an, I have a, I call it a happy light. I have a light that I'll sit in front of because I need more light. But last year was the first time I ever experienced that. Um, okay, one more. One more? I'm not sure. 
I think so. I have made many of these and I showed you one before, but I finished another. This is the one I showed you before. This is a dishcloth. It is the Wondrous Dishcloth by Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet. And um, I knit this one and then did one more. These are for my sister, Catherine, who is coming over today in an hour. So I needed to get this recorded so I could give it to her. These are both knit using the Scapia's Katonia, Katona yarns. And the colorways, I can't remember the names. The numbers are 396 and 520. Which one is which? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting. Both use the same amount of yarn, but my tension was different. And so one is tighter than the other, just barely. I mean, just a little bit. But I've noticed all of mine tend to have one side that skews funny. It's like longer than the other. So as I was learning with all of my knits and purls that I have been doing, I've been learning about um, how to get neater ribbing. And I've learned about when you go from a purl to a knit, how it takes more yarn in between the stitch than going from a knit to a purl. And I was thinking about that when I knit this and I bring yarn around from the back to the front, um, going from a knit to a purl, it actually takes more yarn on that one. And so I worked, I was a lot more conscientious of that on this one and tightened that stitch up and loosened this side up. And so this one is a lot more like even. It's a washcloth, what does it really matter? It doesn't, but I've made a lot of these and I have to say it's not my favorite to knit because, well, cotton yarn is just hard on my hands. Um, but it takes me the same amount of yarn or time to knit this as it took me to knit this. And I feel like that amount of time to knit something I'm going to wash my dishes with, I would rather spend somewhere else. But I really love using them there it's my favorite that's all i have now are these and i actually need to replace some of mine so the next ones i make will be for me because i just use i only use those for the kitchen so it's such a good pattern because it is a double thickness of yarn and you can see all those little kind of v's there that's where the front and the back are tacked together so it's such a great, great pattern, such a great pattern. And it takes one full um, ball, this is 25 grams of the Scapia's Katona. And I can't quite fully complete the whole pattern um, that she calls for. I'm a few rounds short, but it doesn't matter, it's a washcloth and whenever, so it's fine. So I am glad to have finished that in time to see my sister today to give it to her. I do have one more project. I completely spaced it and it is another cotton yarn project um, and it's another baby one. So my niece Aria, who's expecting in June, wait, July, June, July. These are things that I should know. I get so so mixed up now with so many things going on like people ask me how far along is your daughter how many weeks and i'm like let me get out the calendar like i'm i'm not doing well with that i can't like my brain is a sieve everything's falling out of it as fast as it enters anyways my niece um is doing like a woodland theme for her nursery and her favorite thing are mushrooms for it especially the red capped mushrooms. So I found a baby rattle pattern. Isn't that cute? This is by Home of Yarns and I'm using Scapia's Katona again and I made one. Can you hear it? I put a rattle in the bottom and in the top because it's just so light. It's like such a pleasing sound 
kind of, you know, muffled by all the stuffing around it. So I don't remember, I don't have the ball for this one, but it is just kind of a cream color, just off-white. And then for the gills of the mushroom, I'm using color number 257. Such a lovely, like, taupe colorway. And then for the cap, I'm using color... 516 and you could see it used very little of any of these so um it was fussy but it's okay amigurumi i feel like is just fussy anyways and so i can't do much of it at one time but i really have just been wanting to crochet but not get into a big project because i have several big projects that i'm trying to finish so this was kind it kind of I don't know, it kind of satisfied that crochet need, even though I feel like amigurumi doesn't quite fit in with that. It's like its own thing, you know? <laughs> so you crochet from the bottom of the stem up to this point, then you change colors, do the gills, and then you crochet a little circle disc that goes inside here that you stitch in it so that, you know, you can stuff this and it stays in packed really firm and then the top you do loose otherwise it ends up if you pack you know do it full it ends up really distorting the shape and I even contemplated not stuffing it at all and kind of stitching it down but then you wouldn't have as much length to hold on to so Luna come here so I did it as the pattern suggested um, and the little dots are adorable and I stitched those on before adding, before closing up the top because you stitch the cap separate and attach it to the gills. I'm over here petting Luna to keep her happy so she's not noisy. <laughs> Luna, come right here. Then I can reach easier. Come here. Good girl. Um, and then it says to stitch these dots on and weave the tail ends through. And I thought that's going to be more finicky. So I did the top and then I added the dots to it and turned it upside down and tied knots in those strands and then just left the strands long so that they would stay on securely and I didn't have to worry about weaving in a million little ends because it's all stuffed inside of this so that made it easier but the one thing the pattern doesn't state is like if, if I look at the pictures it shows that the gills are not stitched onto the very edge but it doesn't say that in the pattern but looking at it that's what I could tell it was and it also has you crochet the top to the gills and I I don't know I didn't know exactly how to do that to get the look that they had in the photo so I ended up um, whip stitching it which I think looks nice it looks really nice like no problem there and that's really secure so that was a really fun make really you know pretty simple and quick one to make so that's the last of all of my projects the last thing I wanted to do was to show you if you are new here or new ish um, I haven't shown it on this channel but how I like to record all of my projects. So, I don't use Ravelry, and I was never very good at it when I did use Ravelry at keeping all of my projects recorded. I mean, I had to really focus on it, and I, did, I wasn't very good at it, but um, I started doing something very different because I love paper crafts. I love paper crafts so much. So I started doing um, junk journaling, which I call treasure journaling because to me, like junk journaling is where you take items that would otherwise be discarded and make it into something else. Um, most of these are things that I've purchased. Um, not everything. So instead, I'm like, that's too nice for junk it's a treasure so it's my and it holds my treasures so here's the first one I've shown a flip through of this one on a previous episode of Meanwhile at the Castle um, and this is where I record 
my makes. So I, and it's also just really free form. Like a lot of things I do are just so rigid. That's just my personality, but this was a way that I could just be more free form and not worried about it. Add in lots of texture and layers and not have it be like everything is a grid or perfectly lined up or whatever. So I have a photo of the project and then I have notes on scrap pieces of paper tucked in different places. This is where a pocket where I kept like samples of the yarn with my notes. So when I, it was time for like, so I knew these were the next ones to put in. So I have a lot of different ones where there's pockets and flaps of information with more pictures or here's samples, more yarn that I used for different projects. And it's not just knitting, like this is a sewing one. Um, this was a craft that I did, a little beehive that I made centerpiece. Um, let's see. Here was a dress that I sewed and I put a copy, a picture of the front of the pattern and oh I didn't put the back of the pattern on this one. I started doing that after this one but I have just notes and things. See here's some more of those washcloths. Um, and so this is where I would keep track of projects that I was making but I didn't always do a good job of keeping more extensive notes of changes that I made. Like I'd write down the size that I made um, and the yarns that I used when I made it, but like I wasn't really good about being as extensive in my note taking. So this is the first one and I filled that one up and then I've got my second one here that I've started and this these are both from old books that I removed the text block from and I've used a lot of those pages in other projects and in these um, and so like here's my um, the the ice cream swirl hat pattern so I put that in because that was a project was designing that pattern um, oh, I'm trying to see if there was anything I really wanted to share you with share in here. I have just a lot of empty pages now because I haven't finished. I kind of, I stopped in, like I was trying to catch up, but this one, what's the date on this one? This is like a year and a half, two years ago. I'm just behind. 20, February 2021. Okay, two years ago. Well, realizing that I was not staying on track with that and not keeping good enough notes, I decided to um, do it a different way until I could still get back to that because I like doing that. It's, I just, it takes a lot more time. So I just got this journal for my birthday from my sister Emily and I'm just writing down my notes. So I'm writing down all the notes that I would want to have on it, any sizes that I knit, any adjustments I made, what yarns I used. And so I have these notes ready for when I want to refer back to it or add it into my other treasure journal because what I've found is I'm not remembering all those details because I have scraps of paper here and there with some notes here or there, but not enough for me to really remember. Like I have a, a bin of all my projects with a photo, with the yarn, with some notes, but I need it to be more detailed. So that's what I started doing. And I just decided I can't go all the way back to February of 2021. So I started in January of 2023 with my Putney sweater. So that's what I'm working on, how I'm keeping track of all of my projects now. And I like having that because sometimes I'll want to knit something again. Like if I want to knit these socks, what size did I make? Did I make any adjustments? How did, you know, how did I like it? Um, what would I do different next time? So that's kind of the idea. Was there anything I had left to share with you? Oh yes, thank you last episode for sharing all of the comments on different 
baby patterns. I went on a rabbit hole, went down a rabbit hole, like I checked out all of the suggestions, went and looked them up, which led me to others and another and another and another, and there are so many now, there's no way I could make them all. <laughs> so it just kind of led me down a rabbit hole, but my favorites were tin can knits, pretty much everything there. I knew about the Gramps cardigan because my sister has knit that one quite a, you know, quite a few times. And I think she actually knit another one, just barely, and adapted it. As well as Debbie Bliss, there were some really cute patterns there. And then knitting for olive, though, the knitting for olive ones, I wouldn't knit them for my nephews, my, or grandson. There are more, majority of those are for girls so though there's always ones that could be adapted or look nice on either so um those were the ones that i found that were my favorites so we'll see what i end up making i need to finish um the hat that i'm making the socks the leggings and then i'm going to just focus on my fragmentation shawl i want to get that one done because that's the biggest project so I've got four projects on, on the needles right now before I start any others. So thank you for joining me today and I'm just so happy to be back and to be feeling well and I'm ready to go put the job clients back in because I'm seeing my mouth is actually sore without it. So um, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's a good sign. We're just, I, somebody sit, said, suggested, I think you should get a second opinion. I have not only had a second opinion or a third opinion, but I have had a fourth opinion. And this is definitely the route that I have needed. It's quite a complex issue. And it was honestly an answer to prayers of years. I didn't even realize that my severe um, dizziness, um, the ringing in my ears, teeth that are breaking, all of these things, um, neck problems, they were all related. So I'm actually seeing quite a few different specialists all working together at the same time to try to, to correct this. So it's not just one thing, it's a compound issue. And so um, thank you for your concern. Um, I understand like you don't wanna just dive in head first to this big, big overwhelming thing without making sure that that's really the right route, but it's actually been something I've been looking into for quite some time and have sought many um, opinions. <laughs> so, so I'm ready to go put that back in and give my mouth a rest, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.